It's April 1991. I'm 18 years old and I have just given birth to what felt like an 18-year-old. <laughs> As they lay my newborn baby on my chest after his forceps delivery, I'm momentarily shocked by this little conehead looking back at me. But I had never seen a more beautiful conehead in all my life. <laughs> And my heart just instantly exploded with an overwhelming love I had never, ever felt before for anyone, even myself. Some of you may know me from your screens. Some of you may have grown up with me over the last two decades on Neighbours. But being a public figure means that people form many opinions about who I am and how I live, have lived my life. And, how lucky I am and how glamorous it is. And you may have seen me at, at television award ceremonies and, and photo shoots. And, and to many, it would seem that I had lived this carefree and blessed life. But what you don't know about me is I have struggled with a lack of self-worth and relationships for most of my life. It's 2014, and I have just walked out on destructive relationship number five. The last one, I promised myself, as I'm packing my things to get out of there. I was emotionally exhausted. I had developed physical illnesses. My periods were out of control and had been for nine months, with no sign of them getting, getting better. I, I, my previous experience of losing this much blood was during childbirth, through giving life. But that was a complete contrast to what was happening now. And losing this much blood surely meant I was facing death if I didn't choose myself. It was, I was, it, it, it was debilitating. I, I, I couldn't leave the house some days. My, my vitality was draining from me day by day. But I was so afraid of being alone that I suppressed it with substances. Being, having someone was better than having no one. And if I could just be enough, then he would, he would be good to me and he wouldn't leave me the way my father did. My father left me as a baby. He just left. He had an idea for his life that I didn't fit into. So I grew up with this, with this belief that I wasn't important enough to stick around for. I never could understand this, how he could do that, especially as I watch my beautiful boy growing up. And then again, as I give birth to another beautiful son, precious son in 1998, still unable to comprehend how someone could leave a child so innocent so vulnerable, so full of love. My abandonment issues hadn't been properly acknowledged, let alone healed. I had fooled my mind for long enough, though. You cannot fool your body, and mine was beginning to fall apart. So the time had come for me to concentrate on myself and start searching for who this was inside. I had spent my entire adult life playing the roles of others. I knew, I knew how it felt to be mum. I knew how it felt to be girlfriend, to be daughter. But who was I? I had to find a way to believe in myself. And I had to start somewhere. So I started listening to podcasts as I'd walk along the beach. This one particular podcast that I, I came across was about self-love, so I was instantly it, it interest, in, instantly it, it appealed to me. So I was tuned in and I was getting my daily dose of negative ions as I'm walking along the beach when this voice inside me mentions how incredibly cathartic it is to walk along the beach. Well, I saw this as a sign from the universe that I was on the right track. So I raised my hands up to heart space and I gave thanks. But me being cheeky, I asked if I could have another sign. <laughs> so I continued along my walk, and as I'm nearing the end of it, I come to this point in the road that every other time I take the right-hand side, when this voice inside me says, take the left. 
okay, I say curiously. So I backtrack, I cross the road, and I continue up the left, when all of a sudden, two of my senses are triggered simultaneously. One in my ear, it was this, as this woman is saying, love yourself, at the same time, I'm about to stumble on the very same two words engraved in the concrete at my feet. Love yourself. This was the sign I had asked for. <laughs> and this blew my mind. Something was happening and I was tingling. This message in the concrete was exactly what I needed to do. It was literally set in stone. So this is where my journey along the path of self-love began. I raced home, I jumped online, and I searched for every bit of information that I could find on this wonder woman and self-love. When I landed on her website, everything that I had been seeking, everything that I so desperately needed, was offered. So I enrolled in a 12-month Path of Self-Love course and I joined the community of like-minded women. As I was discovering myself, I also I came to realise why it was I struggled in relationships. Um, but what I discovered too was that my biggest struggle in relationships was with women. My friendship group, the women I work with, the sisterhood. I had felt, I'd felt betrayed. I'd been left out. I'd, I'd felt those feelings of just not being good enough. Sometimes I was the victim of this. And sometimes I had done unto others. But all of this, the very roots of this, were based in a lack of self-love. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but sisterhood, sisterhood is the is the container from which from which ancient feminine wisdom traditions are birthed. It's sacred. It's just, it's essential. It's powerful. It's nurturing. It's our lineage our connectedness, and we need to strengthen this. When we've got things like society and social media telling our girls that they need to be something different than what they are, than who they are, or that if they look a certain way, that they're just not enough. I am so eternally grateful for the healing my heart has experienced. The learning has been extraordinary. This has filled every void in my life. I've had many conversations on the topic and I've found that people still find self-love to be as it was defined in the dictionary. Narcissistic, conceit and vanity. Or hippie, self-help, woo-woo flakiness. <laughs> what it's brought to me is nourishment, it's freedom, liberation, it's enabled me to connect to self and it's taught me to stay connected to self, especially when shit hits the fan in life and we all know that happens. It's shown me where, how my past has impacted my present and my presence. It's, it's, it's shown me to be, to be curious and fearless in darkness. It's deepened my relationships. I only have, I only allow loving, respectful relationships in these days. And I've made promises to myself that I will always keep, like I will always remain true to myself, even if it means disappointing another. Now the list is very long, but a few ideas of what a lack of self-love looks like and looked like for me. You need to be in relationship to feel whole. You continue to go back to same unhealthy relationship expecting a different result. You feel shame. 
you, feel, you, you accept abusive or disrespectful behaviour, or comparison, comparing yourself to others, the absolute thief of joy. In the path of self-love, in the, in the, in the self-love world, there's a system called the 10 branches of self-love. And these are particularly useful to check in with where you're at or perhaps what needs to be nourished. And for me, the branch that needed the most cultivation was self-forgiveness. I didn't like myself. And I would look at myself in the mirror and hated what I saw. And I would say to myself, you're fat. How are you holding down a job in television? You're so ugly, you're looking really old. Look at your skin, it looks really acne, your acne scars. And then it would move into my mothering. You're a really bad mother and you really should yada, 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 yada. I mean, it's not okay for me to speak to a friend like this, so why is it okay to speak to myself like this? There was a time that I didn't like myself and to forgive myself was incredibly difficult until I came across and heard a Maya Angelou quote which said, if I'd known better, I'd have done better. And in those words, I forgave myself. I am still a work in progress. <laughs> but the medicine, this medicine is powerful and nothing has ever filled me with such contentment and grace. I called love forth. I now have a loving relationship with a beautiful man who sees me and supports me and believes in me, even when I'm struggling to believe in myself. I have loving relationships. I have loving, evolving relationships with my sons, Harley and Jai. And I have stepped in to my alignment and my purpose. I dream of a future, of a world that looks very different for our little sisters as they step into powerful young women, making decisions based on knowing their worth and believing in themselves. But I see the only way that we're going to be able to develop this mindset is if the influential women in their lives are, are passing on the knowledge by demonstrating how this is done because it's not what we say, it's what we do that leaves impressions. I desire a future where all women, beginning with the women in this room, mothers, daughters, grandmothers, godmothers, aunties, cousins, nieces, come together and pave a path for our future generation of decision makers, of creators, of humanitarians and leaders who are connected to their light and lead with their hearts. Thank you.